Hi folks and welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. What you see in the vise is a damsel pattern and without further ado, let's get into it. The hook in the vise is a Hanak H230 barbless hook. It's on a heavy wire in black nickel and this one's at size 10. The thread I'm going to be using today is a UTC thread, the label's gone unfortunately, but as you can see it's red and it's at 140 denier. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is run a little bit of wax through my, th through my thread. This just helps to uh, bed it onto the hook shank. I'm going to catch in behind the eye and using touch and turns, I'm using my rat's tail just to keep them turns nice and neat and touching. I'm going to bring it to approximately where a barb will be on a hook and then I can come in with my snips and just remove that. Okay, next then, this is going to have quite a long tail and as always with my long tailed nymphs or lures, whatever you like to call this, it's called a damsel nymph but it's more akin to a lure in my eyes. I build quite a big bulk at the back. Some people like to just catch in a, a wrap underneath but I find this helps to prevent tail wrap fouling of the hook. So first part of the tail then I'm using some Comp Candy Olivesque Marabou. I've got a little feather here and I'm going to just take a thumbnail's worth from the bottom. So I'm just using my thumbnail as a guide and I'm going to take that from the bottom. Put a little twist in, and just over my waist basket, basket. Sorry, couldn't speak properly there. I'm going to catch that in, and then about the entire length of the body, and I'm going to lock that into place, like so. Now I don't want that length. I'll just end up with lots of tail nips if you have it too long. It's a bit of a compromise with uh, damsel nymphs. You know, if you have a long tail, you get great movement, but if you have it too long, you just end up with a fish nipping away at the tail. Okay, the next component going into the tail is I've got some of this glister. It's got greens and olives in it. I'm sorry, I think I got it from trout line. Uh, it's mostly for pike flies, but I'm going to use it to just add a little bit of flash to the damsel. You can use crinkle flash or, or whatever takes your fancy, really. It's up to you, but I'm going to take some of the greens, some of the pearls and I'm just going to take that away there. Now I'm going to dress it so that it doesn't all stick out the ends. I'm going to try and keep it on top as much as I can and catch that into place. Now don't take out don't be tempted to take all, all of this waste. Just take enough as to keep your body nice and even. And again I'm going to come back to my marabou now and take a thumbnail's worth from that. Give it a little twist and cut away the excess over my waste basket. Again, you don't want to tie it in there, you need to tie it so that you're keeping that body the same width or as near as damn it. And then that can be tied in like so. And that's looking not too bad. Now although when I showed you the uh, the fly in the vise initially, you didn't see a great deal of that flash. When it's in the water and it's pulsing, it does show up quite a bit. Okay, so I'm going to tie in a number of different ribs now, and the first one is going to be the Danvilles. This is a fine gold wire. I've got a little piece that I've been working with here. I'm just going to catch that in again, the entire length of the body. And I'm also going to tie in a little bit of P01. This is Lurex from Vivas. It's in the medium. 
and again I have a piece that I've been working away with. Uh, damsels are really popular this time of year and I have been tying quite a few of them in various guises uh, but this one's quite quite fun so I'm going to come back all the way back and catch that in like so. Now for the body I'm, uh, I'm going to be using some of Nature Spirits Emergence Dubbing this is a uh, number 79 and it's Peacock Green I've taken a little bit out of the packet already and I'm just going to dub that onto my thread now you don't have to use red thread you could use green, brown, black it's, up, it's really up to you I've just got a lot of confidence in red headed damsels uh, I've got lots of different styles of damsel fly but I just find the ones with the red heads work particularly well hence most of my damsel patterns not all but a vast majority of them do have red heads and I'm going to leave plenty of room at the front just get the dubbing off my fingers now the first rib to come over is the pearl lurex and I'm going to catch that in at the base with one turn then I want approximately three turns of the pearl lurex coming through the fly and I can trap that in a couple of turns like so, it's enough to be particularly neat there's uh, going to be a whole host of things happening at the front of the fly so don't be overly worried I'm just going to give my thread a little twist um, clockwise, this just tightens up the wrap on the UTC ok, so I've got uh, my gold Danville rib and that's going to trap in my hackle now, unless you're a commercial tyre um, buying capes can be really expensive so an option is to use some of these you can get them little selected uh, feathers this is from Ban Valley Flies and basically what it is is they send you a selection of Mets hackles uh, in various sizes so that you can tie from 16 to 10s so I've selected a feather from the packet and I've got it here. Now I'm going to strip away the waste here. Yeah, I mean, it, it just doesn't pay. It, unless you're tying a lot of flies, it doesn't pay to go out and buy a grizzle cake that's been dyed teal. It just, you know, yeah, to tie maybe five or six flies. So it does make sense to just uh, get a small selection that's going to do you for your own needs. If you're, if you're uh, tying commercially, that's a different matter altogether. So I've just caught in uh, some wax onto my thread, and again I'm spinning it up. want it to be strong but nice and thin. And I'm going to catch in my hackle, like so. Now just before I carry on I'm going to catch a half hitch in just a bit of insurance policy really I don't want the thread to come off and the hackle to be undone now before I bring this hackle over I'm just going to bend it out to the side 90 degree angle from the shank and then I'm going to use my hackle pliers just to grab that feather now the first turn is virtually on top of itself And then I can palmer up the body of the fly, giving it that blue hue in the water. And once it's wet, this will just ping all the way back and it'll look amazing. So I brought it to the rear. It's come to meet my gold rib and I'm just going to work my way through 
the hackle. And what you also get with this is because I put the pearl lurex in, I'm getting a little shimmer of light through the hackle and it just adds that little bit of life to the fly. I was uh, hit Albury a few weeks back and damsels were prolific on the on the water. There was loads everywhere and could I catch a fish on a damsel? Nope. <laughs> I couldn't. So, uh, you know, despite the fact they're out there, it's not always a given that you're going to catch fish. Uh, just because you see the insect and you think, I've got that lovely damsel pattern, I think I'm going to give it a go. <laughs> Sometimes it just doesn't work. So I've just caught my ribbon there and I'm twisting away my wire. I can come in now with my scissors and just take at the base Careful not to cut too much of your tail away. Sorry if you get a little bit. I'm just wetting my thumb and forefinger and I'm going to bring all that back. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. Uh, I don't know how well you can see on the camera, but I've got, there's quite a lot going on with the body. I've got the rib, I've got the glint of the, the mylar. It's looking pretty good. Okay, now to finish the fly off, I'm going to use a little English partridge feather. Got a lot of confidence in English partridge. Uh, it just seems to add something to the, the pattern. Now you could very well have brought your hackle a bit further forward and just used that, but I like to add this front hackle. It just gives uh, the pattern that little bit of extra oomph. And what I'm going to do, is take out that, is catch in the tip of the feather, like so. Sweep it all back, so I've caught that, just swept it back. Then I can remove my hackle pliers. I'm going to catch it with the bad side of the feather onto the fly. Just nice and gentle. And I'll get a couple of turns in to secure it. Bring the tag back out the way to the front of the hook. And then once more, I can come in with my snips and just remove the tag. Now, you've created a natural handle here. That said, I still like to use my hackle pliers. I just find uh, it gives me a bit more control. And when I bring my feather round, I'm going to use my thumb and forefinger in my left hand to slick that back. Some feathers will pop forward, just pull them all back and use as much of the partridge as you can get away with. I like to use all of the feather uh, because I am a tight jock and once I've got it all in place there I can come over with my thread, trap that in and what I like to do is get several turns onto the onto the stem of the hackle and then I can come in and simply remove it. Okay, we're on the downhill stretch now. I'm going to lick my thumb and forefinger, slick everything back out the way and just build a nice red head. As I mentioned earlier, I really like to have a red head on my damsel patterns. I'll titivate that up in a bit. Come on with your whip finish tool. And then you can remove your thread. Now all that remains to do is to either varnish, super glue, however you like to finish your flies off. Uh, I like to use a little bit of UV resin and I'm 
just going to remove that stray fiber at the front and the fly will be done now I'm not going to bore you with the resin part but if you're keen on damsels why don't you check out Ronnie's pattern which I'll put on the, uh, the screen for you now it's super effective and it's also competition legal thanks very much for watching the video and if you're enjoying what I'm doing please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you all again next time